Hi. Hey there. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. Excited to be here with you today. Looking Thank forward you for having to me. So I'm here today in the main gallery at Sulphur Studios with Revival, which is our current exhibition curated by Antonia B. Larkin and featuring 14 artists from around the country. Today we have a very special guest, John Allen, whose work is featured in this exhibition. Allen was born on the island of Barbados. At age 16, he migrated to Brooklyn, New York and became influenced by hip hop culture, specifically street and graffiti art. In 2014, he received his Bachelor of Fine Arts in Studio Art with concentrations in graphic and digital design from SUNY Potsdam. Quickly after graduating, he was hired as a membership assistant by the Museum of Modern Art in New York to assist with the new Henri Matisse exhibition. As a result, he became fascinated with Matisse's process and his cutouts, and the act of cutting out would later become a significant part of his practice. In 2018, Alan graduated from Louisiana State University with concentrations in painting, drawing, and printmaking. Since then, he was an artist in residence at the Oxbow Fall Artist Residency in Saugatuck, Michigan, and at the Acre Artist Residency in Steuben, Wisconsin. He's exhibited in Louisiana, New York, Los Angeles, and Ireland, and his work is featured in the 23rd issue of The Hand Magazine, in addition to forthcoming volumes of Studio Visit Magazine and the Southern issue of New American Paintings. Allen currently lives and works in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So John, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have your work in this exhibition. Um, do you maybe want to get started by talking about the origins of this work, which is called Sometimes I Sit and Pray? Yeah, sure. Actually, I just wanted to, to just take a brief moment to acknowledge um, the deaths of the Asian Americans who lost, who lost their lives. Um, and I really just wanted to kind of condemn racism on a whole. And so just wanted to say my heart goes out to the Asian community that's mourning right now. Um, Absolutely. And so, um, but this piece in particular, um, and again, thank you to Antonia for also uh, selecting my work to be a part of the show. So excited to be a part of it. And so this um, painting itself was created around the time of my thesis show for grad school. And um, it's a combination of screen printed images that are then collaged and paste, cut and paste together and I also incorporate a lot of spray paint in my work. Um, as you mentioned in kind of like the introduction, I am really influenced by um, graffiti and street art, hip hop, um, and also like this, uh, like kind of relating to abstract expressionism. I love the freedom mm -hmm. that comes from, you know, creating spray painted works. And so that kind of trickled into my love for screen printing as well. As I'm screen printing, I'm kind of dragging the screen as I print. And that's kind of a process that, I, that I'm starting to develop and I look forward to um, in this new body of work that I'm working on right now, kind of preparing for um, a few shows coming up, so. Nice, yeah, that's exciting. Like these innovative ways of using the screen and like adopting those printmaking techniques and combining them as you're saying with abstract expressionism, like you could see all those influences in here for sure. Thank you. If you get closer here, you can see that these are elements that have been collaged on. So this theme um, that you reference in this piece of prayer in relationship to rest, could you maybe expand on that idea? Yeah, sure. I think for me, um, I was raised Christian. Uh, my dad, he's a priest. And, you know, during the pandemic and everything, it's, it's been kind of difficult to get into church physically. So they've been, you know, thankfully, thankfully we have virtual means as this one right now, um, with Zoom and everything. So it's been, it's been good to participate in a communal sense. But me personally, I prefer to pray. Um, I tend, I'm still on the, uh, right now I'm on the fence when it comes to participating in church per se, but um, when it comes to prayer, I, I really, and, and again, I'm talking from my experience, prayer for me is kind of like a precursor to rest. Um, with all of the crazy things happening right now, 
I kind of turned to prayer um, mm -hmm. in a way for creating the space to be able to rest. Because after I'm praying, the hope is for me to then let everything, all of my troubles, all my worries go. Yeah, I think that's, that's a running theme through a lot of these works, the spiritual meditative ele element and finding, you know, finding solace in taking time for sort of inner reflection. So we have your piece sort of in relationship to a lot of other works that are, that are dealing with a similar sort of approach to rest. And, you know, of course the title, um, which is sometimes I sit and pray addresses that explicitly. So yeah. question, what compelled you to sort of include this piece in particular, or um, what does radical care mean to you? Yeah, I think that's, I think the work that Antonia is, is doing is, is so inspirational and I think it's so needed right now. Just even, even pre COVID it was needed, you know, this idea of rest and thinking about what the NAP ministry is doing as well. Um, this idea of rest, I think it's so important for not only um, black people in general, but um, everyone in, 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 to be honest. Um, but I think this piece in particular, it actually, the title itself actually stems from uh, a Joey Badass quote. Um, Joey Badass is a Brooklyn-based rapper and uh, Flatbush. And so I lived in Brooklyn for a long time before I came down to Baton Rouge. And um, it's, it's so, I, I found it so comforting to, to hear like a, a rapper who is, is very um, street heavy, you know, his, and, and, and so this was kind of like a transition into what he's talking about now in his, in his music as a rapper. Um, mm -hmm. One about healing, one about togetherness, um, building or strengthening the black community as a whole, the way we talk about black women I'm thinking about. So there, there are a lot of different elements that came, that kind of came into this work and then came into uh, my body of work. Yeah, it's so, so interesting that you mentioned that as the inspiration for the title, because we were just speaking with Christine and she mentioned like a musical inspiration as well with the talking heads and with nothing but flowers. So that, that connection is interesting too. Um, but branching off of that, like, what are some of your other influences that like, what's, what's inspiring you at the moment? It could be music or you know, just anything in culture that's driving your, your current work. To be honest with you, black women at the mm -hmm. end of the day, uh, black women who are, well, black women, I think have now started to receive their flowers. Um, you know, of course, with having Kamala Harris as our first vice president, um, first black woman, first, um, you know, there are a lot of firsts for black women, but this should have been happening a long time ago. So my work specifically is, is really, um, in a way, I'm, I'm kind of talking to black men as like my primary audience. I'm interested in having conversations around how we treat ourselves. I'm interested in having conversations around how we treat um, women, black women, our mothers, our fathers. And I'm really interested in kind of breaking and ending cycles. That's, that's what I'm really trying to do uh, with my work. So, um, and, and then kind of being in the mindset that it's, it's okay to be vulnerable as a man. It's okay to be vulnerable as a black man, you know? Yeah, I think that that's something Antonia mentioned as well in her radio interview uh, a couple of weeks ago, where she was saying it's long overdue, you know, it's never been fair. The system has never been set up fairly and it's, it's long overdue, this kind of action. Thank you. Um, so is there, Anything else you'd like to share as we sort of bring this to a close? Any upcoming plans or quick plugs you'd like to make? A uh, quick plug real quick. I mean, I have a few shows coming up. One at Sulphur Studio that I'm actually really looking forward to next year. Um, it's going to be a solo show and just looking forward to kind of bringing the conversation to, to Savannah, Georgia. Um, I also have a residency coming up at Anderson Ranch that I'm really looking forward to as well. That'll be 10 weeks. So, yeah, it should be really exciting. Looking forward to a new body of work. 
Nice. Well, thank you so much for joining us here today. And thank you to everyone who's tuned in. Uh, you can follow John at I am John Allen. Um, and also check out his work on his website. I wish you well and hope to see you next time. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for watching this episode of Sulphur Artist Talks. Sulphur Studios is a project of Arts Southeast, a nonprofit whose mission is to make Savannah a destination for art and culture in the Southeast by supporting established and emerging artists, engaging a diverse community with creative programming, and developing awareness and appreciation of the arts. This content is made possible by viewers like you. If you'd like to support our mission, please visit us at www.sulphurstudios.org to learn more. You can also reach out to us via email at info at sulphurstudios.org. On behalf of Sulphur Studios, I wish you well and hope to see you next time. Thank you.